welcome to Raw and Prophetic with your host, Apostle Katrina Garrett. Raw and Prophetic is where we are real, we are anointed, we are women, and we are prophetic. On this podcast, you will be encouraged through the Word of God to step in your purpose-driven assignment from the Lord and to be inspired and encouraged to be all that God has called you to be. So, welcome to our podcast. Here is your host, Apostle Katrina Garrett. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Raw and Prophetic. I'm so excited to be on tonight. God is so good. We just thank you for what He's doing. He's doing great and mighty things. Bless the Lord for His blessings and peace on tonight. Without further ado, I am so excited to have a guest on the podcast on tonight and she's a powerful woman of God known her for a very long time amen and she is uh been a part of our ministry for several years and we just recently have ordained her as pastor slash prophet so without further ado I'm going to introduce to some and present to others none other than Pastor Ramonda Moore Brown, how are you doing on tonight? Evening, good evening. All is well. Amen. Amen. Blessings and peace. I just thank God for you being on the podcast. And, you know, I was thinking, I was sitting here a few minutes ago and I was thinking about um, when you had Blog Talk Radio Show uh, several years ago. And I was saying, you know, I sure miss that, you know, because I remember at nighttime, you would come on around 10 o'clock, wasn't it? In the park. Yep, and and so it, and, and I really enjoyed it because you know by the time you, uh, well of course my kid was grown, but I got my dogs in the bed. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> Y'all forgive me for coughing because um traveling and stuff. I got a little bit of cold because I didn't get much sleep. But anyway, um, but you know, I remember looking forward to those Saturday nights where I would just cuddle in my bed and listen to you. And you know, sometimes you would get on and you minister, and the guests that you would have on the show. But I uh, want you to tell us who is Pastor Ramonda Moore Brown, and tell us about yourself and your ministry. Well, I am Pastor Ramonda Moore Brown. Of course, I'm from Panama City, Florida, but I've been here in uh, Montgomery, Alabama since 2018. I'm a woman of God first, uh, um, a mother of six, and um, I'm just a natural encourager. I um, Here in, in Montgomery, I have just been drawn to the lost souls, the, so, the people that others don't, you know, necessarily want to deal with or minister to. Mm-hmm. Um, the Lord has really given me a to reach out to those people and to just love here oh and to to deal with those like i said who others may not want to deal with uh homeless or just lost and confused you know yes um i remember you were telling me something about you were doing things for the homeless people Mm -hmm. um and you actually started out making plates from your house and um you started out with what you had mm-hmm. and that really, 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 really ministered to me because one of the things I've learned throughout ministry is so many people feel like, well, I don't have much to offer, you know, or they feel like I don't have gazillions of dollars or they feel like, oh, when I get this amount of money, then I'll start my ministry. Then I'll go forth and do what God is calling me to do. But I feel like you should start with what you have because when the woman gave, her last dollar, her last coin, Jesus looked upon everybody that had the money and said she gave the best out of all. So share with us how God blessed it, because I remember you shared with me how you just started out with plates mm-hmm. and God graced you and blessed it to for you to be able to provide more. 
Yes, well, I started out, we started out with seven plates um, that I made here at the house and we went out and kind of some people to feed and, and then we kept doing it weekly. And I'm a part of another social media group called the Next Door Neighborhood App. And a man uh, messaged me and said, uh, I've been watching you and your family and your ministry and uh, Sunday school class with my partner. And he said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give him all the information and um, I'll get back with you. Mm -hmm. And he did. And I thought maybe something small, you know, not, you know, big, but to come, come to find out this was a pretty large church. And the man said that we wanted to give to a smaller ministry because we found out that they'll give even out of their own need. And that's what we, and here they partnered and they, um, I haven't even met them yet. I've never seen their faces. Uh, they've only seen what we've done through the app and by hearsay. And then other people would donate and give and it's just, it's just grown from there. And every week, that's what that's what we do. My family, my children, after service, I cook and I go out and feed them. And we also have some elderly that we feed and just love on. I have a, a, a lady that I'm helping right now. She has cancer so and she doesn't have any family here. So just being the hand of Jesus, you know, to those who need, need a hand. Praise God. And I really believe that's what we're being called to do. <clears throat> in this season is <clears throat> we're called to be we're called to be the hands and feet of Jesus. Um, I really believe also too that God wants us to be able to, to solely depend on Him as our source in this day and time because it is so easy for somebody with wealth to say, oh, "I'm going to start a ministry," you know, and get everything that's needed. But people really want to see people who are totally depending on the Lord as their source of ministry. <clears throat> it kind of reminded me that even in the days of Elijah, when he prophesied to Israel that there would be no rain. And in the midst of him prophesying that word, he actually had to walk through with Israel with what, with what he spoke because God led him to the brook. But as he led him to the brook and the ravens came, and fed him yes. at the brook, but there, but but then there came a time that the brook dried up. Yes. And so, so Elijah had to actually walk through what he prophesied, and he had to even go through with Israel when the brook dried up, and even in the, in the midst of the brook dried up, the Lord came to him again. And so it really makes me uh, see and understand that in the midst of when we're going through adversities in ministry, especially because ministry is growth yeah. and it's not just growth as far as like, as far as numbers it's growth inwardly and spiritually. And you are learn how to lean on God's providence and his spiritual um, guidance and protection and what he has ordained you to do. And so that's basically what you did. You stepped out with not having much, but the Lord laid upon someone's heart to sow a seed in your ministry, to bless your ministry. And I really believe this is the, the season that we're going to be seeing. A lot of people in ministry are going to be getting supernatural um, providence for their ministry. Supernatural doors are going to open for them. There's going to be people that's going to be giving people uh, churches. They're going to be giving them, you know, money. I ain't going to say thousands of dollars, but they're going to be giving them what they need yeah. to do whatever the Lord has called them to do because they really believe that God's hand is resting upon their ministry. And so um, you're getting ready to step out now into your, your own ministry at pastoral ship. And so tell us a little bit, you know, how God has just, you know, been working upon you to start this ministry. What is your ministry? Give us the name of your ministry and all of that so we can learn, you know, everybody can hear and know who, you, you know, what you, who, what the name of your ministry is in case somebody do want to sow into it. And so 
Isaiah 61 ministries is uh, God gave me that scripture when I didn't even understand it. I didn't even get it and I couldn't get it. <clears throat> and, um, and then when he placed me where he, things came together and then he let me know why over 10 years ago that, that scripture that's meant so much to me. And in Isaiah 1, it, it speaks about what we would do. And I know we all say that God will give you beauty for ashes. And, and But that particular scripture, if you go back and read it, it said God equipped us to do it so that we mm -hmm. can raise up others and they will build a desolate place. And that is exactly where he has me right here, pouring in those to help build them up. They build up the desolate places to get out in the streets. We're not focused on being in any wall. We're mm -hmm. out in the streets to let them know to to make them feel a part of their their city to help rebuild the things that have become desolate. The places yeah. that have been forgotten. You know the places that used to be prominent and they've just kind of let them go. So that's what God had me here, and all of it is a process. You know God, mm -hmm. He walked walk me through that same restoration where he had to go into my places, you know, and pluck up a lot of stuff from childhood all the way to age 51 to where I was able to love freely and, and accept love and to forgive regardless and, and, and to, you know, just be the example, mm -hmm. just walking the word of God. And that's what he required. Walk it out. You don't have to have a flag. You don't have to say who you are. Walk it out. You'll draw people to him. By mm -hmm. him. And, and that's what the ministry has done. Just mm -hmm. living out the word, you know, being a blessing to those. And <clears throat> navigate. I've never before. I've never away from Panama City, but I'm determined to let him lead us as, as we do his work, which is to build up this desolate place and branch out. And I stand in agreement with you because I really believe that's what God's going to do. Um, he's really going to, he's really, you know, and, and, you know, what I was sensing in this hour is that we are definitely up against, you know, I was just reading second Timothy four and it was talking about how many are going to not and don't want to do a sound doctrine. <clears throat> and so, but as I was reading it down further in the verse, it was talking, it was, he was telling Timothy to, con, to, to continue in the ministry. And so many people now and, and leaders, they're, they're getting discouraged because there's not very, you know, a lot of people are not enduring sound doctrine in these days. There's a lot of mockery in the kingdom of God. But he told him that there will come a time that men will not endure it. Right. And so in the midst of that, he said they would turn their ears away from the truth. And, um, but he told them to be watchful, endure the afflictions that we will go through. And then he also says, do the work of the evangelists and fulfill your ministry. And I love how, you know, how you saying that God is, you know, he's calling you in this hour to do what he's called you to do because he's calling you to fulfill what he has purpose and destined for you to do. And what I love about your ministry is a family ministry. You, you, you're training up your children how to be servants of God. And it's just amazing because they definitely have a servant's heart and they are, you know, moving in forward. I mean, like when they came, they all had their, sh their shirts that said Isaiah 61 ministries. They're in support of what God has ordained you to do at a very young age. And that is a blessing because the Lord is truly, truly moving in this hour. And so I love the fact that you are persistent in what God has given you to do. And it's not going to be an easy race as we know, but, um, there's another ministry you have where you empower women right and so and 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 I, and I call that more of your media ministry because you do it you know you do your podcast and you you know you also have a podcast you also 
have um, a Facebook uh, group where you mentor women, you uh, minister to them, you push them. So tell us about, you know, uh, No More Broken Pieces and how you empower the women. Yes, No More Broken Pieces. That was <clears throat> that I actually ever stepped out in. And it's just to uh, empower women to overcome. There are so many things we go through as women. And if we don't overcome those things, we won't ever step into the person that God created us to be. So just to encourage them, um, a lot is based on, you know, life application and principles, how to get over, to, uh, you know, a lot of generational things, habits, mindsets, whatever the case may be, to just totally overcome the obstacles that keep us from being who are, you know, the true authentic us. And that's what that is all about. And I had to walk that journey of course, to be able to encourage others. And that's what it's all about. God gives us things to go through. And when we go through them, we are to go back and help each other, you know, help others. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so I like how you, you talk about no more broken pieces because so many women are broken. And one of the things I have learned over the course of time is that throughout life, we will have some things that will shatter us. You know, we're vessels, you know, as the Lord referred to us as being clay, you know, he's the potter and he puts us on the wheel. And as he molds and shapes us, you know, he shapes us as vessels. And a lot of people don't know, but pottery is very um, uh, delicate. Um, you can easily break a piece of pottery like that. You know, if it falls to the ground, it just shatters, you know. And so one of the things about him saying, by him putting us on the powder, potter's wheel and him molding us and making us, is that there will be some times that some things will come in our heart that will shatter. But the broken pieces that have been shattered, you know, I remember years ago I was reading a, a I don't know if it was a poem or it was a little it was a little story about someone talking about this vase that this lady had and you know it was a beautiful vase and it got broken and so when she uh when it broke she glued all the pieces back together and when she glued the pieces back together everybody was like well, why would you keep this vase being that it was shattered but when she stuck the light inside of it the light began to come through the cracks of the vase and it looked almost like a, 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 a mosaic lantern, you can say, it, you know, because the way the light would come through the vase, the, it was like different rays of light because of the, of the brokenness that the vase went through. And it was the most beautiful thing that the, everybody was saying it was just so beautiful when she stuck the light in it. And so the gracious thing about Jesus Christ is that he is light. And when we are broken and we put him in us, then that that it, that brokenness can turn into a beautiful story. Um, and so I love how you encourage the women. And I've, and I've witnessed you, you doing that. I've seen many women that have come when you back when you were on blog talk radio. I've seen many women that was broken uh, being put back together. But in the midst of it, because a lot of people think, well, if I, <clears throat> they, they feel like even though I'm being put back together, I'm still broken, but they're not understanding that in their brokenness, as the light is shining, their healing begins to flow, you know? And so it's just amazing how you have blessed so many women over the years with that ministry. And even in the, um, Facebook group, how you encourage, and you've always been one to empower her, because that's kind of like your slogan, empower her in No More Broken Pieces. So tell me, uh, tell us, how did you come up with that? Because I, I love how you would say empower, and then empower, it had her in there. Well, uh, it it came from this, I, I've told the testimony, it came from just me being at place where I was totally done, 
I thought I was ready to end my life and it was a botched thing. And I had to laugh and I said, God, okay, since I'm here, what do you have me to do? And that gave me the no more broken pieces that he was going to put it back together again. And he taught me as he began to put me back that I would turn around and do help others. And then always to, to remember that we're being empowered, but to empower her. And if I empower you and you empower her, and then, and it's just something that can go on to make sure that we all get healed. And that's mm -hmm. how came together because uh, the broken pieces, as he said, they make us unique, but only God can put those pieces back together. Because if we try, you know, it may stay for a little while, but it's not going to stay there. It's not going to remain because God is the only one that can fill in those little cracks that holds us together mm -hmm. and time show his light. Mm -hmm. And I can attest to that. He is, you know, Jesus Christ, and, and I, like I, I was explaining this so many times to so many people, I've been explaining it to my son, you know, when, when he met his father for the first time. Only the Lord can come and feel those broken areas and pieces in your life. You know, because people can, people can apologize to you, you know, and don't get me wrong, I've, I've known people who was offended by somebody and when they apologized to that person, the person still was carrying the hurt. Mm -hmm. So it's not always that people look for an apology because sometimes <clears throat> the hurt can go deeper than the apology. You understand what I'm saying? And so, so like you said, even if the person comes and they apologize to you for whatever they did to hurt you, or whatever they did to, you know, only Jesus, only Jesus, as you said, can come in and he can begin to bridge that, 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 that hole in your life or that gap or fill that void. Only the Lord can give you that peace. He can give you that because I can attest to it. You know, um, when I went through what I went through in my marriage, you know, my ex-husband apologized, but it still took the spirit of God to come in and to and to take away that pain and that hurt. You understand? Because there are people, like I said, that have apologized and the person still did not let it go. They, they you know, they they begged them, you know, but and that's only because they didn't have the, the, the love of God to come in and to help heal. That's why in Isaiah 60, it, I think it's 60 or 61, when he says he came to heal, I think it was 60. He came to heal the brokenhearted. He came to set the captives free, to set at liberty those who were bound. Because Satan wants us to be in bondage and he wants us to live in guilt or he wants us to live in uh, unforgiveness, not just for other people, but even for ourselves, you know, I had to even learn to forgive myself for some of the things that I did when I was young and some of the choices that I made. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about forgiveness Ooh. of ourselves. All right. That's a big one. That's a big one. Uh, actually, that was the toughest. That was the toughest because I, I myself walked in the spirit of condemnation. Mm-hmm. Every time that I thought that I had forgiven myself, I found myself right back there at that place. So that took just a lot of time going back to the altar. Mm -hmm. going, and I'm not talking about at church. I'm talking about at home in your mm -hmm. time. And, you know, your I'm going back. And if you love to get to a place where if you love God, you can't deny his love for you. And mm -hmm. if you don't believe that he forget he forgave you, you know, how can you believe that he loves you? Mm -hmm. so to accept God's love. And if he could forgive me, I had to learn to forgive me. Because it's a two-way, it's a two-way street. The same, you know, I trust that he knows what he's doing with me. And mm -hmm. if he chose me, 
in spite of everything that I've done. Mm -hmm. He still chose me. He still entrusts me with the gifts, with the ministry, with the children, with whatever. Then I have to forgive myself or it's hypocritical. It is hypocritical. So I had to just keep going back to a place that comes up to mind. But then I cast it down. You have to cast because those things want to come back up. Yeah. Now, yeah. Remember and those self-talk. Remember I talked about the mirror talk a lot on my um, podcast and on my lives. You got to get, mm -hmm. get in the mirror. Get with in the mirror. Mm -hmm. Mirror with yourself. Because mm -hmm. that, you know, we've done over the years, you just want to come back. But you have to just lay it at the altar again and encourage yourself because the Lord had to get on me. You encouraging everybody except yourself. Yep. So getting in that mirror and encouraging yourself, that's that's what it takes. It does take that. And you're right. We can be our own worst critic mm -hmm. and condemn ourselves for stuff that we could have did 20, 30 years ago. That is so true because I've learned that only the Lord can come in and help us to forgive ourselves as well as because it's easy to forgive other people. It's easier to forgive other people than it is to forgive yourself. <clears throat> and so with that note, um, I am so uh, grateful that God will let us know. He'll, I mean, he'll tell us. It's everything that we need is in the word, as we know. And without the word, we would not be able to survive in this world, being able to live at peace with ourselves, peace with God, peace with other people. And I think one of the reasons why there's so much war in the hearts of men is because of unforgiveness for what they've done, or they feel unworthy, or they feel there's no self-worth, you know? And so um, I am just so grateful and thankful for God calling you at such a time as this, because it's so needed. We, we need to see um, more people in the body of Christ concerned about others and their needs more so than preaching engagements and money and all this stuff coming in. We need to get this true word into the hearts of people who are dying yes. because they are dying spiritually. And that's because, and then as they're dying spiritually, they also are dying in the flesh. They're, 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 they're dying spiritually because dying dying in the spirit means the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. That's what the Bible says, the gift of God is eternal life. And when once you receive the gift, and the gift is the Holy Ghost, salvation, then you got something you can work with. Amen. Amen. And so... um. I'm just thankful for the ministry and I'm looking forward to the things um, that God is going to be doing in your ministry and in your life. So just tell us a little bit, you know, what is the future for um, the, you know, no more broken pieces. What is the future for Isaiah 61 ministries and what can we be looking forward to, to be supportive? Yeah. Well, definitely. Um, also, I have to put in there that the uh, Forever Changing uh, podcast, I'll be starting season six. <clears throat> okay. Real soon, Forever Changing with Ramonda Moore Brown. And it's on all of the platforms, um, Spotify, Anchor. Mm -hmm. You know all, all of the ones that I'm so sorry. Ma. Okay. All of the. It's okay. <laughs> As I said before, my podcast. It's okay. Ain't yeah. done perfect. <laughs> But definitely you know, those Apple Music, uh, iHeart, and things like that. No more broken pieces. Uh, we'll definitely be doing some. Um, uh, so if there's some ladies I'm kind of pushing along, and I want to be able to kind of help them begin to blossom, you know, with the gifts um, that God has given them all, by giving them a platform. And I've always done that, you know, with even just my podcast to give others a platform. Mm -hmm. uh, awesome because 
I thank God for you and Apostle Tommy. You always let me heal first. <laughs> then you let me grow and then you let me bloom. So that's what we'll be doing there. And I'm excited about our spring revival that I will be Yay! having. First, uh, Isaiah 61 spring revival that we will we'll be having on Zoom. You will be our first speaker. I will have those dates up soon. I wanted to kind of wait till after the ordination. And in Montgomery, we're getting out in the streets. This weather is warmer, and we're going out into the streets. Amen. Out. Man. Yeah. Awesome. Marketplace ministry. And I love marketplace ministry. Um, that's my favorite. Um, besides um radio. Mm -hmm. I love radio more so than this. Um, I like being back. <laughs> but <clears throat> I love marketplace ministry as well because when you're in the marketplace, you don't know what you're going to run into, you know, and it's exciting because you don't know who God's going to send in your path to minister to, or maybe sometimes they might minister to you because sometimes it's like iron sharpening iron. So I'm so excited for um, what God is doing in the ministry and <clears throat> the ministries that you have because. You know, it's it's we're we're we are actually living in times where we're working in multiple ministries. You know, we're not just working in one; we're working in multiple ministries. Um, not too many over our head, but you know, just like we have Thy Kingdom Come, that I have this. We're on prophetic, and so <clears throat> tell everybody how they can get in touch with you, um, how they can get in touch with your ministry, and to connect. Mm -hmm. Okay, definitely here on uh, well on Facebook. Uh, Ramonda Moore Brown is there. Isaiah sixty one Ministries is there, and uh, for the women, we do have the No More Broken private group. Uh, you can email at Ramonda Moore Brown at gmail dot com and um, reach out by messenger, whatever it takes. Connect. I am all about encouraging others, supporting others, just watching God do what he does through his people. Amen. And I and I and I thank God for you. I really do. I thank God for you, uh Pastor Ramonda, because you've always been uh faithful. And I can attest that you have waited. You waited until the timing of, of, of the Lord to do what he needs to do. Um and you know a lot of people don't understand, you know, this is ministry as well, social media I know a lot of pastors are like saying, oh, well, we need to be in the churches and, you know, gatherings. And that's good. I'm not saying that. Mm -hmm. But this is, a, I believe social media is more of evangelism. That's definitely um, I look at social media more as evangelizing more so than a church. Mm -hmm. Because you're reaching the souls, you're reaching people. And, it, it, and, then, and then if they hear what you're saying, you know, prayerfully, it leads them to a ministry in their community. Because you got to realize when we're on social media, people watching you from all over. So now everybody's watching you that's local. So I don't understand why so many people are against it because I feel like it is a great tool for evangelism, right. you know? And yes, we know some people misuse it, but look at the positive side of it. Right. Use your, your, your social media as a way to evangelize to a soul so that they can be and pray for the Lord to lead them. The Bible says pray for laborers. So pray that they'll be they'll be sent to the right laborer in the field that they can they can grow and nourish. So I thank God that, that we can contact you on social media as you guys heard it. You can come back and watch the replay. You also can listen to um, the podcast audibly on the various platforms such as you know Spotify, iHeartRadio, all of those things. So. We giving you tools and you just, you work with what you can, you know, as far as allowing uh, the Lord to bless you and salvationally, you know, save you, your salvation, spiritual growth, get into a local ministry. And if you don't know how to do that, all you got to do is get on social media, whatever area you live and just type in churches. They all on there. Most of all of them are on there. And then just pray about where the spirit of God will lead you. So I thank you so much, Pastor Ramonda, for coming on. Before we close out, is there anything else you would like to say to encourage the women? Definitely. 
I would just like to say, uh, be patient with yourself. Mm -hmm. Give yourself the same grace that you give others. And God will definitely transform your life, your mind, and your heart. He will. He looks like that. Praise God. And he will. As you said, he will um, do just what you said. He'll, he'll, he'll bless us. He'll give us what we need. And most of all, patience. <laughs> yes. That's the hardest. <laughs> I want it now. I want it now. Mm -hmm. you know, we live in that microwavable world, honey. Amazon. I really believe Amazon is the cause of that. <laughs> <laughs> Although I love Amazon, but I really believe that's the reason why we like, why is it not happening? Because we can get that item in two days. In one day, sometime one yeah. day, something depending on what you get. Last week, but, I got one day I did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, depending on what you get. And then those that do live where the Amazon uh, distributions are, they get their stuff the same day. They order early that morning. So, you know, but unfortunately, we, you know, the Lord knows his timing and he knows when we need what we need. So I am just so excited that you came on and you introduced yourself and, you know, you gave the women um, what they need. So right before we close out, I do want you to go ahead and give that contact information again for those who are just tuning in, welcome to the broadcast. And then we're going to go ahead and we'll have you close this out with a prayer. Again, it's Ramonda Moore Brown here on all of the social media platforms. Isaiah 61 is on Facebook as well. And then we have the private women's group, No More Broken Pieces. Uh, Ramonda Moore Brown at gmail.com. You can reach out or even through Messenger here, uh, the Facebook Messenger. or I uh, Instagram as well. You can connect through there. All righty. All right. Well, you can close this out with a with a with a sweet prayer, Amen. and we'll um, go from there. All right. Father God, we thank you right now for this day. This we thank you. Every bereaved family, Lord, we thank you that your people are depending on you. Lord God, we are trusting you and we are ready to be your hands and feet in the earth. Lord. We thank you right now for choosing us, oh Lord. We thank you for this broadcast, oh God, this ministry. We thank you for Apostles Tommy and Katrina and thy kingdom come global ministries. We give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, again, ladies. And gentlemen that maybe might have been watching, I've seen a couple of gentlemen on. Thank you so much for listening to Raw and Prophetic, where we are real, we are anointed, we are women, and we are prophetic. And again, Pastor Ramonda, thank you so much for coming on. And I am looking forward to what God is going to do in your ministry. I'm so excited for you, praying for you, you. and just ready to see God do his thing. Amen. Amen. So, you guys, we love you. Thank you so much for watching, and be blessed.